morning guys so you are all going to be receiving your deep cast and your uv resin this week i'm so excited i cannot wait if you are new to this resin or you haven't had a chance to catch up on the wonderful um just for you online girls lives i'm going to give you a quick whistle stop tour of what to do when you get your deep cast resin so you keep them in your house or in a um reasonable temperature 18 to 25 degrees not the shed not the conservatory nowhere where the temperature plummets um, you don't want super cold hardener and super cold resin it's just harder to prepare when it's time to use it and I always mark my bottle lids with a H for hardener and an R for resin don't mix your lids up on the bottles as you'll seize the bottles you'll not get back into them and then we're good to go so when it's time to get making you're going to use your hardener as it is room temperature but your resin needs to be nice and warm it needs a hot bath it says warm up the resin on the label i am really lazy and hate any chance of bubbles so i just use recently boiled kettle water it's absolutely fine to do this boiled water from the kettle stand your big tub in that hot bowl of water because the heat has to get through these thick walls of plastic so i always always just stand it in super hot bowl of water lid nicely firm and closed and then what i do is i give it 20 minutes if it's the winter and it's absolutely freezing you might want to change the water and reheat it and do it a second time i find once is usually plenty of time um, make sure no water gets into your resin mix so dry off the bottle when you take it out so we'll do that in a second gloves on barrier cream hair tied back all your health and safety respirator if you're adding anything or if you um, have a respiratory condition and you're not working in a ventilated space so this resin deep cast if you pour it 15 centimeters a small children's ruler if you pour it at 15 centimeters it is going to cure between 16 and 24 hours now when you start adding pigments and glitters and have shallower pores, it will take a little bit longer, 24, 48 hours. If you did a really shallow pour like a bookmark mould, it could be 72 hours. So it depends how deep the pour, the greater the pour, the quicker the cure. Okay, so my resin has had its nice little bath. I'm going to take it out, making sure it's nice and dry so I don't get any water on my work. There are different ways that you can measure your deep cast. You can do it by a three to one ratio. So three parts resin, one part hardener by weight, by measuring in grams on your scales. Or if you're like me, I like to measure in volume. So I like to count the mills up the side of my pot. So I could do a two to one ratio. So I could have 40 mils of resin and 20 mils of hardener. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So I am going to pour myself 120 mils of resin, which is two of these pots, and I hate waste, so I'm going to keep reusing these pots. I'm going to do, so I've done 120 mils resin, so I'm going to do 60 mils hardener, because it's a two to one ratio when we measure in volume. I'm just a bit stringy, for better words. Watch your hair. <laughs> Can you see that? So we need that to disappear when we stir. And we stir gently because the last thing we want to do at this point is whisk it and put more bubbles into our resin because we've just warmed our resin to try and get rid of the bubbles. It's very cloudy at the moment. Trust the process. So my three minutes is up, it looks like water. Now there are a teeny tiny few micro bubbles in there. Can you see them? We're gonna wait five or 10 minutes just to let them sit and rise to the surface. And then we can use our long handled heat tool to pop them. You could use a heat gun. Lots of heat from a heat gun is warming that hardener up, which we said, didn't we, at the beginning not to do, which means it will cure it quicker. If your hardener is really hot, you can have a flash cure with some resins. So I always like to go in gently with the heat with a long-handled lighter. Um, and that's enough. 
but the um, gases, bubbles, in this resin have an excellent ability to pop on their own. So even if you think you might have missed a few, don't worry too much about it. They'll pop when they're in the mould. Um, this Apex resin, as all Apex resins, has amazing UV technology, the latest UV technology. So it is not going to go yellow. It isn't going to change colour over time. Providing you put the right pigments in and that they are light fast pigments and they're not going to change colour, you're absolutely fine. It's an excellent quality resin. So I'm going to give mine a little bit of a tint. I fancy a couple of drops of electric blue, premium dye from Just For You. Just go two drops to start with. I love mixing my colours so I'm going in for a little bit of electric yellow. It does say to give them a shake first. I forget that every time. Two drops. Let's see what colour we get. Look at that dropping down. It's cool, isn't it? That is gorgeous. I can see that in a river table. And this is the perfect resin for your river tables. I want mine a bit more green to go in my studio. Five drops. Remember, too much pigment and it might take longer for this resin to cure. As with all resins, too much pigment upsets that initial ratio. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Look at that, a beautiful turquoise, but I've just added a couple more drops of electric yellow. I'm a sucker for some sparkle, so I'm going to put the gold opal flakes in on the Rebel Glitter Collection, just for you. I love them, but they go everywhere. The finer the glitter, the better distribution in a casting resin such as this. So I won't use chunky glitter, I'm just going to use a hint of sparkle. It's so pretty, let's see if we can get that on camera. It's very pretty. And then we're going to pour into our mould. Make sure you've got yourself a nice clean mould. This one's been used over and over again. It's one of my favourites. Um, let's measure it. Okay, so we're just under 11 centimetres tall. So I would expect this to be done in around about two days. So over 24 hours because it's not quite 15 centimetres. But before two days. I've got lots of pigment in here and some sparkles, so that just adjusts the cure time a little as well. And then I'm going to pour. I always pour from up high because that helps disperse any bubbles that you might have that are in there. Not that I could see any, but it's not bad practice to get into. And if I run out, I will pop another colour in there so I've got a trim. Perfect. And I think we should go blue for our next layer, which I'm going to pour straight away. But you could pour your next layer tomorrow or the next day. This time, I'm going in with some of my sparkles. Brave, which is a chunky glitter, and we're going to see what happens. I'm going to mix it up in a layer of clear. I love glitter, so it's going in. that to do its thing for a couple of days and when it's ready it'll be rock hard to the touch and you'll have yourself a beautiful crystal clear casting here's some that I did with flowers absolutely beautiful 